Hello and welcome to my watch reviews and today's review is of my latest vintage watch which is now actually the oldest vintage watch I own. This is an absolutely stunning Omega watch from around 1923 to 1927. Uh, absolutely beautiful as you can see by the shot that you're looking at now but it came to me in a much worse condition. Believe it or not this watch was actually gifted to me by somebody who was watching my main channel my retro watches a gentleman by the name of Bill and this was actually his father's watch and Bill is now in his 80s he doesn't seem to have anybody he wants to give this watch to it was not working and he sent it to me and I then duly completely restored it and documented that by a video over on the main channel which I'm going to leave links for below and there'll be one above now in the uh, card. Um, this watch uh, turned into a right task I mean it literally took me around about eight months from start to finish mainly in the last two months when I started it more in earnest and it tested all my watchmaking skills that I've accumulated over seven years of being a hobbyist. I had to tackle problems I've never tackled before such as broken jewels and the jewels in here are called rub jewels so they were inserted in a brass insert if you like where the uh, the brass is folded over to hold it in and I had to seek a watchmaker's friend to help me with the repair of that the watch was actually full of oil as well so I figured I could just clean it and it would be all right uh, but no it kept on throwing up problems after problems and the main one was all to do with the balance wheel the balance wheel on this consider it's a hundred years old is quite a little feat of engineering because you always associate a balance wheel with being round and whilst it is on this watch it also has two cutouts on the wheel and that is actually for thermal compensation because as the watch would heat up on your wrist or in hotter weather the steel will obviously distort slightly or expand slightly and that can send the timing out so even a hundred years ago they were looking for things like that uh, but then I had lots of problems there was things called timing screws which are in the sides of the balances you don't see this so much in modern watches now but certainly in the vintage ones you do and those are to, to try and make an analogy it's like an ice skater so a balance wheel will spin you want the balance wheel to spin freely um, if the balance wheel is spinning too fast for instance and an ice skater would put their arms out it would slow that spin down and those sort of timing screws you can mess around with to try and speed up or slow down or balance the wheel uh, for poise and I had a wheel that was the poise was out the hairspring uh, had problems um, and certainly the screws did and what was happening was the watch was running far too fast and I had to slow it down by using things called time washers uh, which actually go on to those tiny little screws and they are minuscule um, and then I managed to break one in the balance wheel as well which uh, didn't help so I had to drill that out by hand with a 0.1 millimeter which is four thou or four thousandths of an inch uh, in order to eventually get this watch functioning again but my god I'm glad I did because it needed to be saved it had a superb backstory to it which I would recommend you go and watch the video it is an hour long um, but the reward to see it tick again uh, was phenomenal and for that reason this watch will always stay in my collection it's very small I'll uh, do the sizing for you now so you can see so back in the early times of watches they made them very very small and as you can see here it is barely 30 millimeters in diameter which in modern terms is absolutely microscopic you can see there it's 10 mil thick and a lot of that is the crystal that you can see there it's very thick the lug to lug uh, including the strap there is only really 39 millimeters so it's probably the smallest watch I've shown on the channel I've actually got a similar one here which is a rotary similar kind of design and that one is actually 30, well the same sort of size look 28.9 30 millimeters so yes small watches but this is what it looks like 
on the wrist. Now maybe it's because I've put a lot of hard work into this watch, but to me it doesn't really look as small as it measures. And I've been happily wearing this. Maybe it's a bit of pride because of the achievement, but it's beautiful. It has everything you want from a vintage watch. It's got a backstory. It's a hundred years old. It's almost one owner from new. Uh, it's got uh, an enameled dial, for instance, and I had to clean that dial. It had a lot of very old dried oil that had managed to come through, presumably where the second hand is on the subdial, and uh, cleaning that off very tentatively. But there's just something about that look. I think the font that they've used for the Arabic numerals is, well, again, beautiful. The minute track, along with the uh, 24 hours on it that are in red, gives it that little bit of uh, colour. And then those beautiful um, hands. I think they're Breguet hands. I might be wrong. Uh, they've actually been blued. There's a slight corrosion on them, unfortunately. I did, or I was very tempted to polish the hands and re-blue them. But if it went wrong, I don't know if I could have ever lived with the consequences. Now, some of the might be drawn to the crown and thinking that looks a bit fishy. Well, it does. That's the crown that the watch came to me uh, with. And often with vintage watches, and certainly ones that are 100 years old, the existing crown is usually all worn out. No doubt that's what's happened here. It's worn out. It's been changed. And what you also find as well is crowns are often changed for big crowns. And I don't know whether that's because the gentleman who was wearing it uh, got fed up with winding a very small crown. Maybe they got a bit older and their fingers weren't as nimble as they once were. So often, you, like I say, you find them with these bigger crowns. And I've deliberately kept that on. I think it is part of the history. Uh, Bill's father used that very crown and I think it serves its place to stay on the watch. I chose a very simple buffalo print leather strap for this. I didn't think anything else would do. It doesn't need anything too busy, does it? And I've been asked a lot on how a strap fits on these because it's not a conventional look. It's just like a bar, for want of a better word. And the straps are called open-ended straps. And that's quite literally what they are. You push the strap through the hoop and they have little tabs on the other side that you push through that bit that you fold it over and fold the tabs over and the watch stays on. There we go. That's how they work for these watches. So how does a 100-year-old watch run on a time grapher? Well, here we are. We're a couple of months on since I made the video, and on the video it was running a little bit better. It now needs further regulation. Uh, the watch says on the movement itself, by Omega, that it's regulated to two places, which would probably be dial up and dial down, as you can see now. However, I tried to do it to four positions, so using the crown up and crown down. But due to all the hairspring issues I've had, and the timing washers etc we do have poor positional error but for a hundred year old watch running within say 30 seconds a day from an amateur watchmaker i am super impressed although i still think there's a little bit more of a tweak to do to get it just that little bit better and here's the hundred year old omega next to my only other omega that i own which is this omega seamaster cosmic which Incidentally, there is a review video on this channel, so go and have a look for that if you want to see that one in a little more detail. Uh, by contrast, so uh, the uh, Speedmaster is 36 millimeters in diameter. It does now look a heck of a lot bigger than the 30 mil vintage one, uh, but what an evolution and two beautiful watches from a rather interesting manufacturer that I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with. Uh, here it is now also next to the only pocket watch that I own. Uh, it's a Coventry pocket watch. I live in Coventry and uh, I'm proud of the history of pocket watches in my city. However, it kind of gives you that contrast. The Coventry pocket watch there is dating from the, the late 18th century. And then so you're looking at, say, 25 years uh, difference between the two. We went from this uh, Fusi type of pocket watch where it's wound by you know having a chain rather than a, a mainspring to this tiny tiny little watch and then today's world we're back into trying to wear almost that 
pocket watch on our wrists, aren't we? Anyway, that's it for this little review. Hope you really did enjoy it. If you did, hit a thumbs up. It helps the channel. Leave your comments below. I'll read every single one. I'll try to reply to as many as I can. And I'll be back with more modern watch reviews very soon. I've got some interesting things in to uh, show you all on the channel. And I'm working hard to produce those videos now. So thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.